whether it's supporting the athletic program or organizing some relief efforts after a natural disaster. We're proud to be here. We appreciate your support. Go Jackets. Football fans, your starting offensive lineup for the pair of dual Rams. The Rams' dual colors are red and white. They represent Conference 5A East. Their record is 2-5. and five. Their offensive set is a single wing. Their defensive set is a 4-2. Starting at end, number 86, Zach Freeman. Starting at tackle number 51, Jalen Simmons. Starting at guard, number 61, Amar Tari. Starting at center, number 66, Hayden Rabal. Starting at guard, number 58, Xander Vicky. Starting at tackle number 55, Luke Harden. Starting at slid in, number 14, Carter Ballou. Starting at wing back number 80, Eric Copeland. Starting at halfback number 22, Caden Calhoun. Starting at fullback number 16, Mickey Cartrell. And quarterbacking the Rams tonight. Number 10, Cole Shipman. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Cross County, yeah, Arkansas, yeah, and Wynn High School. As the Paragol Rams yeah, Sports yeah, Network yeah, is yeah, excited to be here tonight to present our Paragol Rams, Rams in a Conference 5A East matchup against the Wynn Yellow Jackets. Jimmy Dodge here, along with Brad Hancock. Brad, it's nice to be in Wynn, and I think the first thing that we want to do is when you look around and you, you, you have an opportunity to kind of see what's going on here is to acknowledge to the folks here in Wynn the job that they've done in rebuilding after that uh, – terrible tornado that went through earlier in the year and you can just see the massive amount of damage that was done and uh, we wanted to, to give a shout out from Perigold to all those folks down here that have gone through a lot of adversity and really uh, worked their way through it. I mean they've done a great job here of trying to rebuild and the football field area is just an example of it. Yep. Yeah amazing feat on what they've just done just in putting the service back in and you know beautiful night for football you look at that shot there the the sunset and all that uh, you know foot, this is a football tradition here and as you can see with the tailgates and all all that you know this is a big part very important to this community so it's you know it's good to see them get this uh, back on track here it is homecoming here at Wynn high school this evening and uh, there is a bunch of reunions going on behind us there's quite a party that's been going on over <laughs> yeah. there behind us and probably will go on well into the night from what we're gathering but uh, this is really uh, an opportunity for our Perigo Rams. We haven't beaten Wynn in a long time. Wynn, really, to be honest, has struggled a little bit this year. They're 2-5. and five. Traditionally, they're not a 2-5 and five team, but uh, obviously they've had adversity to go through with some players uh, leaving after last year due to the storms and so forth. But the way that we played last week, and you look at tonight's game, this is an opportunity for Perigo to come down here and do something we haven't done in a long time, and that is – try to beat the win Yellow Jackets. Yeah, you feel like you've let two conference games slip away. You, you know, you had a had a lead late into the game with Elton and got got away from you late. And then the same Batesville had a lead at, at, into the fourth quarter. So, you know, uh, Perigold and Wynn here tonight are, you know, both fighting for that last you know, chance to get into the playoffs here. So this is a very critical game for both teams. Absolutely. And Perigold coming off the uh, homecoming victory last Friday night in which I thought we played exceptionally well in the first half and uh, were able to get the mercy rule going against Four City. But we know that Wynn has a tremendous amount of tradition here. Their stands are full across the way. It's homecoming. 
certainly we're going to have to be on our best tonight. And I think the same keys go that we've talked about the last several weeks, and that is we need to be successful on first down. We don't need pre-stamp penalties, and we don't need turnovers. And if we can accomplish that, which we did really well in the first half last week, we're going to have a solid chance tonight. Yeah, I agree. You know, offensively, you're going to see two teams' philosophy. It's really similar. I mean, both of us are going to try to establish the run early and maintain that and, and control the uh, time of possession. You know, so it may come down to turnovers. Uh, you know, yep. definitely won't limit the penalties, but turnovers could play a big factor in tonight's game. Well, the weather is just beautiful, and you just couldn't have a, a better evening to play high school football. Temperatures, what, low to mid-70s? Yeah, it's perfect. Not a cloud in the sky, gorgeous sunset in the west. And uh, we've got some folks from Paragol that have made their way to back to Rams tonight. Hope everybody that's back home watching enjoys our broadcast here on the Paragol Rams Sports Network. Hey, we got to give a shout-out to our girls' volleyball team. They uh, won last night at North Little Rock in three sets and are now ready for the state tournament, which will be next Tuesday down in Searcy, Arkansas. And I think we play at 6 p.m. PRSN will be on the road to cover that for everybody. Looking forward to that. And uh, – We'll have two home football games next week with uh, who do we have uh, Brooklyn. Win, win no, we junior have, high uh, right. with the junior high Thursday. Win junior high Thursday mm -hmm. and then uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn on Ohio. Friday night. Yes, yep. that's right. Yep. It's hard to believe we're down to the last three weeks of the regular <laughs> season in football. It just flies by. But uh, you know the the progress that our kids have made this year is just really remarkable because we've talked a lot about learning how to win. And we've been so, so close. But the gap that we've closed this year, I think, is, is really, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just a credit to the amount of work that our coaches and kids have pulled off. I mean, we were one play away from winning against Nettleton. And yep. like you said, two-point game against Tech and uh, one-point game against Hoxie and so forth. But the kids are, I think, really understanding now that if they buy into what the coaches are telling them and we play error-free football, we can play with a lot of people. Yeah, these these kids they definitely have bought into this coaching staff, and, and they've taken well the coaching they've been given, and uh, like you said, Jim, they've improved every game. We've seen uh, you know new wrinkles been added, and you know I look for this team to play a, a good game tonight, and I, I think we can run the ball against this team tonight. Yeah, we talked about being successful running the ball, and we were able to do that last week, in which we were able to make solid gains on first down, which opened up the playbook, and we saw a couple of examples last week of Coach Phillips running a couple of plays that we haven't seen. Right. And uh, probably we'll see that again tonight. So looking forward to it. The Wind Yellow Jackets are gathering in the north end zone. Our Paragol Rams will be entering out of the south end zone. And it's homecoming here at Wynn High School this evening. And uh, we're certainly glad that everybody's joined us here on the Paragol Rams Sports Network. Appreciate all of those of you that have subscribed. We we surpassed 1,000 mm -hmm. last week. We appreciate that. We're hoping to continue to grow. And we appreciate all the students that came with us this evening, and uh, Zach Kent, Amy Glenn, and everybody with the Perigo Ram Sports Network. We've got a pretty good crew here tonight. Uh, they've been well fed uh, <laughs> before the game, so we're in good shape there. And right now, both the team's captains are about to meet at midfield for the toss of the coin. For the and for Paragould. Paragould. Number three, Carson Pankey. Number 52, Jalen Simmons. Number 52 Captain is not Jalen Simmons. Simmons. No. Uh, 73, Will Booth. 52 seven, four, for us four. is a new for number. Why does that always happen? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. That, that, that goes back to Carson our coach. Pankey's number three. Right. Coach Phillips yeah. talks about it. You know, some of these kids have to switch positions, yeah. and that requires you to switch number. Right. And uh, so you, I suspect you got another kid has been asked to, to fill in on the line tonight, and, and that's what you want to see. So we'll try to pick that number up. He may wind up changing jerseys here yeah, a little bit too. So the coin is in the air, and now it's on the turf. Officials are discussing the options with both teams. Wynn has won the toss and they've elected to defer until the second yeah, half and Paragol has elected to receive and take the football. And our Rams will be moving from our left to our right, which would be south to north. And we'll have an opportunity to take the football right off the bat, hopefully do something positive with it. 
And then again, just a gorgeous night for high school football. Appreciate everybody from Wynn being very hospitable to us and helping us get things set up down here. We're in an outdoor, sort of an outdoor location, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's really, it's really comfortable. It's really good, and we've got everything we need here, so we appreciate it. We, yeah, luckily the weather cooperated. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able yep. to pull this off. But a perfect night, like you said earlier, not a cloud in the sky, and temperatures just perfect. So should be a great game. We've got about two minutes, and Wynn has a sort of like baseball, and they've got a really a beautiful screen scoreboard, and now the Jackets take the field. And Brad and I were talking about it's a lot like the one over in Batesville. Maybe not quite as large as that one, but it's a really clear, nice, nice screen. Fireworks going off in the south end zone. And now the Perigold Rams about to take the field. Perigold will be in our white jerseys, white pants, red helmets. Win in the blue jerseys, blue trousers, and blue helmets with a white W on the helmet. Here come our Perigold Rams on the field. Got our comp first conference win under our belt last Friday night against Four City. And looking forward to this. I'm excited to see how we match up with Win and how the kids respond after some success last week. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, you know, state playoff, but uh, bid's not completely out of the picture. You know, yep. you got the big showdown night between uh, Valley View and Southside, and then you get next, you got Nelton and Bates. We're both sitting at a uh, three and one conference, and uh, us and Win and one and three. So. You know, this game is important to both clubs if they want to try to keep any hopes alive of making the state uh, tournament. And Perigol will take the field. Cole Shipman, along with Corbin Bailey, will be deep to receive for the Rams. Snap back, and that's going to be a first Big down. Goal. And some running runs to take it all the way. Cole at the 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown. NATO took care of most of the previous field, and it's a really nice facility down here. Obviously, they've got some building to do, but they've just done a great job to get it back to where it is. Yeah, they have. I couldn't imagine discussing with uh, our athletic director, uh, Chipman, you know, have the task that they had to, to pull off here. All right, the officials blowing the whistle. We're ready to play football from Wynn, Arkansas. The ball's in the air. It's a good kick. Chipman will take it back at about the five-yard line, right up the middle of the field, 10, 20. And he's going to be brought down. Good tackle by Wynn out at about the 20. Cole Chipman on the kickoff return. Uh, we'll see here. The ball is brought up to the Ram 20. 20-yard 20 line. Didn't get as much out of that as I think we probably had hoped. So a pretty good job of covering the ball is on the play, maybe the 21. 21. So first down and 10 for Paragool at that point. Cole Chipman, Mikey Peckerl, I see coming out, probably be in the backfield to start things out. Yeah, and it's really important that we establish this one earlier because you won't take this crowd out of, out of this ball game early because you can see they've got a good crowd and they're fired up for football tonight. So. Barrigal waits the snap. Now we're going to shift. Snap. And inside. Not much there. I think Cole Chipman's got it, and he's not going to get too much yardage, although he is going to squeeze out about three yards on first down out to the 25. Actually, man, the four yards. Yeah, we'll take that positive Absolutely. game for sure. Yeah, this is going to be a physical game, and it'll be one in the trenches, as you can see. So, uh, you know, those guys up here are going to have to battle tonight. So second down and six for Paragool. They're on 25-yard line, first possession of the game. Snap back. And Perigol up inside, and Wynn does a pretty good job of bringing that play to a conclusion as, again, I believe that was Cole Chipman running the ball. Yeah, it's hard to see from this vantage point, yeah. but, yeah, they got a little bit of penetration from the defensive yeah, line for Cole's, Cole's going to be given a yard on the play, third so it's going to bring up third down and five down. with the football at the Perigol 26-yard line. So, interesting call here early from Coach Phillips on third and five. Might look for him try to draw him off sides here real quick too, possibly, because Wien is really uh, hyped up right now. Yep. And I believe we may have already called it. Yep. 
Yep. And that is exactly the call. And well, you're right on that one, man. That well. was a great call. <laughs> and he's, he, we got a free five yards and maybe a first down. Got lucky there, I guess. But now, you know, defensively, you can see they're really uh, jacked up. And like you know, we made that shift there, you can see that their defense is fired up to, to stop this inside run. So when you see them being that aggressive, that's that's one thing they're susceptible to. Well, you know, and our kids have done a pretty good job of them several times this year pulling that off. So first down for Perigo following the penalty. Here we go inside. There we go. And there's some uh, – Coach Shipman breaks through there and almost got out of there completely. Yeah, he had a small little crease there, and it doesn't take much for Cole to break one. And, boy, he's tackled by the ankles, really. Well, he did. That's a six-yard pickup on first down. That's another solid play on first down for Perigol out to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line, second down and four. Just underway here from Wynn, Arkansas. Opening possession of the game, 10-13 to go first quarter. No score, Rams. Received the kickoff after Wynn decided to defer after winning the coin toss. Eric Copeland now shifts. And then he has a little false start. Yeah, I think he lined up on the wrong side there and then uh, tried to hustle to the other side and got a little antsy on that call. But that's one thing you can't do tonight, Jimmy. You can't, no. can't, can't give those up. No. So a five-yard mark off will uh, – Take it back to the 33-yard line. It'll still be now, so it'll be down second down and nine after the penalty. I tell you what, I just love the physicality our offensive line has bought into. And with the addition of Calhoun in that H-back spot, you know, we've really uh, been really aggressive at the line of scrimmage. So Rams on second down, snap back. Inside run, there's Cole Chipman. Cole turns it up, makes a good physical run out over the 35-yard line. A little extra business there yep, going. Yeah, Tell you what, Cole's running that bar hard. I'm telling he you. He is really, really giving great effort. Yep. Yeah, six for them. Uh, I guess probably a corner come up, make that tackle. And, boy, Cole, you know, not the biggest guy, but, boy, he, he put a lick on him there. So, so another solid run. It's a gain of five yards. I'm going to call it third down and a long four instead of five. Perigo with the football on their own 38-yard line. Need the 42 for a first and 10. Rams up to the line of scrimmage. Snap. And up inside there's Mikey Pecro. Mikey's go, Mike. got a first yeah. down for yeah. Perigo. Mikey with a good burst. Good job, Mikey, because that, that snap was a little low yes. there, so he would take it right at the ankles. But once again, Mikey always runs physically and, and falls forward. So, a good, great, good run by him. Great job of the O-line there, and a nice run by Mikey Pecker. That's to the Paragol 45-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10. Eight-yard line. Clock moving as we go under nine minutes to play in the first half. This is the first possession of the game. Rams up to the line of scrimmage. Rams have taken it from our own 20-yard line. Snap. Out too close to and field. up inside there's Mikey Peckroll. Mikey right run, eight and Mikey Peckroll is going to take it up line. inside. Good tough run up near midfield. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Love his running style. And that's another five-yard pickup. Solid gain on uh, first down. That ball right at midfield. You felt like, you know, watching a little bit of film, you felt like we could establish the run. If if the guys could just come in and, uh, and establish that uh, attitude early, and so far it looks good. Second and five for the Rams. Second and five for Paragol. Rams up to the line of scrimmage. Waiting the snap. Snap is back. Inside run again. And this time yeah, the ball is on the ground, and Wynn's got it. Oh, goodness. Yep. And Wynn is going to take it to the house, it appears. Number six, that's that cornerback you talked about. Apparently we had a fumble on the play, and Wynn takes Number it six, to the house for a touchdown. Well, that's the one thing we talked about in the keys of the game. We couldn't afford uh, any turnovers there, and unfortunately in that scrum there, they, they were able to strip the ball from Cole, and I, I never saw the ball on the ground. Next thing I know, uh, number six got it, and he's, he's headed to the end zone. So touchdown for Wynn, that is Braylon McDowell. DB number six, and he just picked it clean off the turf, and nobody was going to catch him at that point. So a break for win on the Paragol opening drive. The extra point is up, and no it's good. no good. Hits the crossbar. Yep, hit the crossbar and was low. It was not going to go through. So the win Yellow Jackets take a Paragol fumble about 50, 55 yards for the touchdown. And so the Rams are going to have to overcome a turnover. We talked about that just a few minutes ago. Yep. We need to 
try to play clean, and the first drive looked really positive until that last unfortunate turnover. But, hey, we're just getting started. We've shown we can move the ball on the ground. Now we just need to go down and uh, execute, take it right back down again. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, what do we have the ball there for about – Almost what, four minutes there. Yep, yep. So, uh, you know, that's what you want to do. You want to establish that run and wear down that defense and, and see if you can, uh, you know, take it, get, keep the game close in the second half and, and continue to pound it inside. Kicking off for the Yellow Jackets, number four, Braden Maddox. have a feeling that the win coaches were talking about that as an opportunity defensively to try to rake that ball out as often as we run it in there. So our backs are going to have to be – mindful of that and really keep that thing wrapped up. Yeah, a lot of times when you do see that big scrum and, you know, it gets pushing for a while because, you know, we've been getting a good push at front. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Kickoff is going to go all the way back to near the goal. In fact, it is at the goal line. It's going to be a touchback. I was fixing to say that might have been better. Into the end zone. Just let on go through Close the end zone. For the Rams from the Rams so Rams will have it first down and 10 on the 20. Wynn's got a good kickoff, man. He's putting yeah. two of them back toward the end zone. So the Rams first and 10 on their own 20. Coach Phillips talks to the offensive unit. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we come into the game and you see Coach Phillips, you, you know, never really know what kind of defense you're going to face. And so he talks about the adjustments he has to make. And so it's going to be interesting to see if he uh, dials up anything different on this drive. But, you know, first and foremost, you want to get out of this hole here a little right. bit. Right. So first down and 10 for Paragol at our own 20. Yeah, the officials, I think we're just about ready to mark the ball ready for play, and they do, so here we go. Snap, and Perry going to run, and that is going to be well defended by Wynn. Very short gain on the play. Couldn't really see from here who. Okay, Cole Chipman with the run. No really no gain on the play, so it's going to be second down and 10 for Perry Golden. It's kind of what you're talking about. Wynn's going to sell out on that run, and at what point do you see maybe you try to take a shot at it? Yeah, you'd like to get it, you know, a little bit more space, get it, get out from the shadow of your own end zone before you take a shot. But, you know, at some point there's going to be an opportunity to, to throw a ball over the top. So Rams second down and 10. Set. Snap. And here comes your pass, and it is, oh, oh Mikey Peckroll. Yeah, and he would, he'd still be running he, if he, he got there. He could have scored on that one if he'd have caught it. My goodness, what a, that, look, that was there. So pass falls incomplete. Great call there by Coach Phillips. He was seeing kind of what you and I were here. Yeah. And that some of those plays are going to be there, but you've got to execute. And that's what we talked about. So it's going to bring up third down and 10 for Paragool. Yeah, you know, and you've got to do that to keep the defense honest. So you you want those two safeties to, and the corners to have to respect that pass, so they're not just completely selling out on run support, because otherwise they're just going to load the box up. And Perigold is electing to call timeout. So timeout on the field. Timeout Rams are going to face third Perigold. down and ten from our own 20-yard line here with 7:15 to play in the first quarter and win who capitalized on a about a 55-yard fumble return for a touchdown here just a few minutes ago on Paragol's opening drive. Win leads six to nothing and third down and long for Paragol. So Rams need to uh, to execute here. And like you said, this is you don't want to let one bad play turn into several in a row. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, you may see a, somewhat of a conservative call here, and if you don't get it, not the worst thing to have to punt the ball away. Yeah. Defense yeah. has been playing well as of late. Yep. And uh, so far, uh, Gwen's offense not stepped foot on the field. That's yet. right. We so. have not seen the offensive unit for the Jackets at all. Again, you're with us on the Paragol Ram Sports Network, PRSN, on YouTube and Team One Sports. Jimmy Dodd Jr. along with Brad Hancock here from Wynn Yellow Jacket Stadium on the campus of Wynn High School. The ball is on the Ram So the Rams now face third down and 10 from our own 20 yard line. Now a little different offensive look. Yeah, we're going to split some receivers out, yep. which, you know, and that takes some guys out of the box, so it should make the running a little bit easier. Ball is snapped. Paragol's going to throw it. Out pattern to Carter Ballou, but the ball was behind him a little bit, and Carter really never had a chance to turn up field. 
And so that is going to be about a two-yard loss on the play and forced Paragol into a punting situation on fourth and 12. Yeah, we've not seen that. They tried to set up a little screen. We've seen them split Carter out, but mostly just to kind of draw some guys out of the box. But tried to set him up on the screen there. Well, and the ball was behind him, and he had his back to the uh, yes. to the defense, and that really made that difficult. So Rams are forced to punt and need to get a good punt out of here. Yeah, you know, as always, guys, you get down and cover because Wynn's always got great athletes in the return game. It could play a big part tonight. Rams in punting formation. Snap. We've got a whistle before the snap. They were coming after it, and they may have uh, encroached. No, no it's going to go against Perigol. So a five-yard mark Flag off. On the play against the Rams for delay of game. Delay of game. Hmm. Okay. So the Rams will be moving back five yards. Now it's going to be fourth and 20. And yeah, so you probably very well expect to see Wynn come after this ball here. Yep. Lucas Dethridge. Lucas Dethridge in punting formation for Paragool. Standing inside his own five-yard line. Pretty good snap. He gets the punt off. It's a low-line drive kick that will bounce. And, yep. and the ball may have hit one of the win players, and I think it actually did. Corbin Bailey was close to the play, <laughs> but win falls on it at about the Paragool 47-yard line. So the Win Yellow Jackets will have it first and 10 at the, the Paragool 47-yard line. 47. So here's where the defense 47. really needs to bow up and From the Ram, see if we can't uh, stop these guys on three downs here. Yeah, because, you know, offensively, like I said, you're going to see a similar philosophy of what, what we try to do. Uh, you're going to try to establish the run. It's running a split back beer look is, is their base offense, but this is a running quarterback here. John Watson, 12, is the win quarterback. There's a toss sweep to the far side, and it'll be a – Gain of about three yards on the play. Paragol actually played it pretty well. I think that's number 21, Cameron Cameron's Smith. Gain, four. Gain of four on the play. It'll be second down and six. Yeah, they're going to use that toss sweep quite a bit tonight. You'll see that uh, pretty often. They're trying to Gain get to get a guy to the edge there and second use their speed. Seven. But uh, and here's a more traditional lineup here of the split back beer look. Second down and six for the Jackets. Snap. Quarterback's going to keep it, runs this way, turns it upfield, and he does push forward for some yards down to inside the 40-yard line to about the 38-yard line. That's going to be about a yard short of the first down, make it third down and one. Yeah, and you see they fake that dive, and what they're doing is setting up an option, a triple option attack here. Where that quarterback likes to run a lot, but you're going to have to defend that dive play too. That's the bread and butter for the offense. So went up to the line of scrimmage. Third down and one. Straight handoff up inside. First down and watch out. And Corbin Bailey really saved a touchdown there. Yeah, there's your dive play. And, and that was well blocked by the Jackets. Yeah, you would rather your li uh, linebacker make that than your safety that make that tackle. But good thing Corbin's there. Cameron Smith again will take it inside the Paragool 30 to the 28-yard line. Yeah, and if you can't stop that dive, that's going to set up everything else in their playbook. So that number one, you got to get that stopped, and and uh, you know we expect uh, our linebackers here making plays, especially Caden Callahan. First down and ten, win at the Paragol 28-yard line, 4:35 to play in the first quarter. Win leads six to nothing. Quarterback's going to keep it, turns it up inside, and he'll squeeze out. Uh, three or four yards. Well, John Watson on the down carry. to about the 25-yard line. They're going to give him five yards and make it. Four. Yeah, let's say four yards. Make it second down and six. Brings up second Football down just shy of the Paragol 24-yard line. Yeah, get similar, nothing fancy from no, here. And like you talk about, similar to our uh, offense, if you can get them stopped on first down, that it really helps your defense a lot. Watson, the quarterback for win. There's a handoff inside, and that time Perigo does a much go. better job, and I think that's Xander Hinkle in there on the tackle. Number 10. As number 10, Dante, Dante Smith, Smith carried the ball for win, and 
not much there. So that's going to bring up third down and five. Nice play there by yeah. Xander. Yeah, and Big Asher works from there from the yep. tackle spot. He was in on that okay. and was able to beat his his man and, and get in the backfield. So that's important. If these defensive linemen can get some penetration, uh, that will really uh, affect this offensive win. So third down and five for win. Interesting play call. One guy split out, one split out to the left and in motion. Hand off back to the near side and they get around us on the edge and that's going to be close to a first down. We had that play there, but we got outflanked a little bit and that's going to be a first down for win. Yeah, just a little reverse action from uh, their halfback. But, uh, boy, they, they make you, your guys have to play their keys and everybody has to be solid on defense because you're having to defend so many different looks here. So first down and 10 for win. That's balls at the Paragol 22 yard line. The ball is on the ramp, 17. Excuse me, 17 yard line. Apologize for that. We are kind of in a really kind of an odd <laughs> angle it here. Is. It's tough for all this. And end. looking through a bunch of folks. And all tough. the action's been on that end. Yes. So first down. Inside handoff on the quarterback keeps it. And he gets around the corner. Watch out. And he's going to be all the way down close to the five-yard line. Morgan just, Number 12, John Watson excuse me, John three. Watson just kept the ball around the outside there, and he beat us around the corner. Yeah, he's faking that dive there, and that uh, he's got the Watch option to hand go. that ball. And if he doesn't see a man on the outside, he's going to pull it and keep it. And so he had a, a lot of running room out there, and Corbin Bailey came up from safety to, to save a touchdown. So the Jackets first and goal at the Paragol five-yard line. Inside handoff, and the Rams do a pretty good job. The ball's well, on the ground. Let's see, he's still like, there. Here we got it. And the Paragol Rams have recovered the fumble. Oh, that's a huge turnover. Huge. Yep, absolutely. A huge turnover for Paragol. Yeah, the, off the, the Yellow Jack offense has so mo so much momentum there going into that, and just about to punch one in, and, boy, that's a good break for us there. Ball's on the five-yard line, but Perigol, more importantly than that, keeps win out of the end zone and keeps this a six-point game. Right. That's the kind of play that can turn games around right there. Absolutely, and it, it's a momentum swinger. And, uh, you know, this game could have a lot of those tonight. And uh, as we are seeing, that's the second time the ball's been on the ground. So, you know, the offense, you have to feel good about what they've done. They just need to, to put something together here. 2 away to play first quarter. Win six. Perigol nothing. Rams backed up to her own five-yard line after the turnover by Wynn inside the Perigol 10. Here we go, Perigol, here we go. Here we go, Rams await the snap. Here we go. Inside run. And Perigol, nice run on the play. Oh, Rams man. do an outstanding job. And Cole Chipman. Takes it out near first down. Let me tell you, Jimmy, Caden Calhoun made a punishing block to open that He run. did. And, uh, boy, since they've switched him over to offense, he he has taken on that role, and, boy, he is an excellent blocker and just busted a wide open hole for Cole. Here. Nine-yard gain for Cole on first down. And that accomplished two things. It gets us out of the danger of the goal line and sets up second and short. Rams await the snap, snap, low snap. Perigol goes up inside, and there's Mikey Peckerel, and he almost got out of that <laughs> scrum as well. And once again, a little bit of a low snap, but that's the second time Mikey's been able to uh, salvage a, a good play out of a, you know, what could have been a disaster there. So that's going to be good for a first down. So a great job of Perigol getting off our goal line and our own five-yard line and taking it out to the 20-yard line. Await the snap. Snap is back. And inside there run. There it is again. And Cole Chipman almost breaks out of there again. So, Brad, you and I talked about it. Perigol has shown the ability to run the football here. Oh, I'm telling you, and we're really close to breaking one. And, and you know, you know, I, I like to watch the body language of the defense. And, boy, I'll tell you right now, Wynn's body language is not the best. They, no. they're, they're feeling this physical uh, run game up front here. So, yep. That is a solid seven-yard pickup on first down. We'll set up second down in three. 35 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Win six, Paragol nothing. But Paragol's taking the ball from our own five-yard line and gotten a couple first downs. Now it's second down and four. 
Inside run again, and Paragould is going to have, I believe, another first down. Yep, I agree. And I tell you what, wins, they're steadily sneaking guys up, and that yep. play had uh, 10 guys in the box there, yep. and we're still able to get, get a positive game. Cole Chipman with another hard inside run. Great effort. And you're right, this is going to set something up. There's going to be a pass play here. And I think that's going to wind down the first quarter. That's going to be wide open when we yeah. run it. Yeah, that's it's just a prediction. Coach Phillips, I think he's uh, he's probably licking his chops right now because yep. the playbook opens up. When you can get a positive gain on first down and uh, you're forcing the defense to, to get out of their comfort zone, then uh, you've got a lot of possibilities. Well, that's the end of the first quarter, and win leads six to nothing. But having said everything that's going on in the first quarter, I think if you're a Paragol Rams fan, you feel pretty good about this because – we give up a fumble return for a touchdown, and wind goes down. Looks like they're going to take it in the end zone. We get a turnover inside the 10-yard and immediately take it from our own five-yard line out over the 30 with a first down. Yeah, really, you know, just that fumble was <laughs> the, yeah. the play of the game, honestly. Yes. Which, luckily, we were able to recover one and keep them out of the end zone. So, But uh, once again, the offense has just got to really feel good about themselves. They've steadily been improving as the season's gone on. And, uh, you know, like we talked about earlier, last year we didn't really have an offensive philosophy, and these kids have really bought into this uh, physical style of football. Well, you mentioned Caden Calhoun, and you talk about a young man. We've said this last few weeks ago, but he's overcome some injuries in his career here. And he's dedicated himself, and, man, what a great difference he's making out there. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, just to be honest with you, last year, you know, we he played a lot of offense, and he was the guy. I mean, yep. he – but, you know, two knee injuries, had to come back from that, and, and the coaches asked him to, to play some defense, and, boy, that, he has really showed up there. And, and about midway through the season, they've decided to, to incorporate him more in the offense as a blocker. And uh, Caden, you just can't say enough about him. He's done whatever he can do to help his team win, and, and what a difference maker. So the Paragol Rams now will have it first down and 10 as we begin quarter number two, football on their own 32-yard line. All ready for play. Snap back. Cole Chipman follows his blockers. Cole will be knocked down at about the 35-yard line. That'll be a gain of three. Game of two, second and eight. And let's call that second and seven. And Ball right on the 35-yard line. Hunt coming in for Peckerel here. You know, we talk about the m maturation of uh, Chipman and his offense, and as you see, he's he's so patient following his lead blocks. You see him get right behind and put his hand on the hip of his lead blocker, and, mm -hmm. and boy, when he gets a little crack of daylight, he can really turn on the speed, and this offense just really fits him. Second down and seven for the Rams. Snap back to Chipman, looks for a hole, cuts it up inside, and he'll take it out close to the 40-yard line. They'll mark it maybe at the 38-yard line. And that's going to bring up third down and four for Paragool at their own 38-yard line. Game of four, third and four. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what Wynn does here to defend that. If they're going to continue to try to defend this run or – Third and four. Interesting four play call, too. Yes, for sure. Ball is snap. Cole goes around the right end. Cole it. looks like he's got close to a first down, and it depends. We can't see from here, but I think he's got he's it. He's right at the sticks, looks like. And he should have it. He's got the 43-yard line. He's got the first down. Yeah, and we're able to attack the outside on the short side of the field there. So, uh, boy, you, like you said, Jimmy, we talked about it a little bit earlier. You have to feel like we're just, you know, uh, the right opportunity. There's going to be a, a chance for a big play here. So now the Rams have it first down on their own 43-yard line. And again, Rams have done well on first down. Snap back. Cole puts his foot in the ground, turns it up inside. He's got a little running room, and it'll be about a four-yard gain. Solid gain on first down. Out over the 45-yard line to the 47-yard line. Yeah, that's that, that's that dozer set line. Yep. that Coach Phillips added just two or three weeks ago where we – have basically three H backs, and we generally run behind behind that behind that heavy set side. But uh, well, it's been really been successful for us since we've added that. Ten minutes to play in the first half. Second down and seven for Paragool. Snap back to Cole Chipman. Cole goes around the right side, and that's a nice play over there by their end, who brings that down for little if any gain. And that's going to bring up third down and seven. Third and seven. 
So I don't know if we took that a little too wide or what, but the end made a good play over there. Well, you know, we're working that uh, dozer side, and it's lined up on the right-hand side, but also it's a short side of the field, so you don't have as much room to work with there. But uh, Peckerel sub subbing back in here as we go out of the dozer set. Third down and seven for Paragool. Oh, we're staying with it. Yep. Call it the Paragool 46-yard line. Now man in motion. Paragool's going to throw it. They look jump pass, and it is incomplete, and that ball was. And I think Coach Phillips wasn't happy with maybe somebody maybe holding one of our receivers. Didn't really catch that, but that ball fell harmlessly on the turf, and the way that was thrown, it could, could have been, been picked. picked. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. yeah, I was holding my breath myself. Yeah. But uh, you throw that over the middle of the field and kind of a jump ball, and that's mm -hmm. that's Number dangerous. So it falls incomplete, so no harm, but it is going to bring up fourth down for Paragould, and Paragould will punt with 9.06 to play in the first half. Good snap back to Dethridge, and that's a pretty good punt. It's going to be caught in the air. Paragould needs to get down there, and they do. Uh, not much on the return, and I think the coaches are pleased with that, and let's see if we get a man down. We do briefly, but I think he's yeah, okay. I think he's okay. Yeah, Corbin Bailey, our deep snapper there, he he gets down there quick to cover those punts, and he took a pretty good shot there. He felt like it, maybe a flag was coming, but but no flag there. So, so the Win Yellow Jacks will have it first and ten from their own 35-yard line. And I believe it was Xander Hinkle that got binged up on that play yep. too. So we didn't get all that much out of the punt at the end, but still, first down for Win. Quarterback hands off inside, watch out. And that's going to be Smith again. He is thrown to the turf. Yeah. And I mean thrown to the turf. Yeah, Calhoun. By Caden Calhoun. I'm telling you, put it on him. But, uh, you know, that's that basic dive play, and you're going to have to come up and tackle well yep. at the point of attack or you're going to yep. have a long night. So first down run for win. The football on the win 49-yard line, 848 to play in the half. Win still leads 6 to nothing. Paragool's shown we can move the football, but we haven't been able to make a consistent drive yet from uh, start to finish. Snap. Quarterback's going to keep it up inside, and he'll pick up three, maybe four yards on the play. Again, that's the win quarterback, John Watson. Yeah, he's a good runner, and he, he's one of these seniors that hung around after yep. all the – you know, they had a lot of kids move out, and uh, well, this had a coaching change too. Absolutely, yeah. which you know they, they brought in another. Uh, I guess the most winning active coach in Arkansas at the time yep. <laughs> right now, coach, so coach and Clay Toddy. Toddy. Yep. So gain of five, second down and five for win. Snap back inside handoff, and Perigo does a pretty good job. That's only maybe a gain of a yard two at most. Yep. So you're going to bring down a third down here, which, you know, you're on a, their side of the field where they very well might go for this on fourth anyhow, but going to have to defend that dive play for sure. Third down and two. Football's at the Paragol 43-yard line. They need the 41 to make the first down. Yep. And they drop. They get Perigo to jump off sides, and that's a free five yards. Yeah, I don't even think they had Perigo. a play call on there no. by the looks of it. And I believe that's Michael Lawrence, 79, in the neutral zone, and another one as well. So Perigo gives up a five-yard penalty, and that'll earn win a first down. Yeah, good to see Michael back on the field. He's, he's battled back from injury, and, and I'm sure he's anxious to get going. And, uh, you know, he just have to, you know, watch the ball, as Coach says. <laughs> but uh, we're glad to have him back, and he will definitely help us. The rest of the season. So win now, first down and 10 at the Paragool 37-yard line. Rams need to stiffen on defense here, try to keep them out of the end zone before the end of the half. Man in motion, toss sweep to the far side, and your man's got good speed, and he will take it close to a first down. I think he will have a first down out there. That was number seven, I believe, Christian Wren. Yeah, just a sophomore, just a sophomore. He, he's, got he's got good got, speed, yeah, like he's you said. Got you. Really good speed. So yeah, they're trying to get him out on the edge for sure with that tall sweep. Football at the Paragol 26-yard line now. First down and ten. Win. 
Hand off inside, that time not much. Rams do a better job. Stop, stopping that play at about the 24 yard line. Gain of two, make it second down and eight. For yeah, the Jackets. The quarterback's got a triple option there where he's gonna he's got that dive option first and he can keep it, but as you said, like seven there is your actual pitch back if if he do, does decide to, to pitch it. We haven't seen that yet, but well seven's got great speed if he decides to do that. Second down for the Jackets. Handoff inside. Number 21's got it. And Paragould will bring that down at about the 20-yard line. That's going to bring up third down. Cameron Smith takes it down to the 21. So here comes an important play. Third down and six for win. Football is at the 22-yard line. Yeah, and with Wynn getting the ball to begin the second half, you really would like to keep them out of the end zone here. So sure, yes. Uh, important play for the defense to rise up here. Absolutely. Try to get a stop. Two important plays considering if they go for it on fourth down. Right. Third down to six. Man in motion. Handoff. And there's that man again, and he gets outside of us, and he's going to have a first down, I believe. Is that number seven again? Yes. Christian Wren. Nothing fancy, but uh, they took advantage of some speed there. And I believe it is going to be a first and ten for the Jackets. So Wren picks up the first down on third and six. The football is at the Paragol 16-yard line. Yeah, it's almost like a counter handoff look to the halfback there with seven. And, boy, you can't give him the sidelines because once he gets there, he's going to be gone. First and 10. Quarterback, straight hand off inside. And number 21 again, Smith, will take it up inside. And right now, wind's knocking some holes on our defensive front. They are. We're having trouble up front. And, uh, you know, it's been a long, sustained drive. And, you know, we're trying to sub some guys out and keep guys fresh. But, uh, uh, you know, I expected it to be a, a physical battle in the, in the trenches for sure. And it has been. Five-yard gain, so it's going to be second and five. Football at the Paragool 11. And we move under five minutes to 4.50 to play in the first half. Win leads six to nothing and is threatening deep in Paragool territory. Quarterback, handoff inside. And eh, not much there. Down to about the nine-yard line. It's going to bring up another third down, this time third and two. Ball is at the eight-yard line. Jackets need the six for a first and ten. Here comes another important play. No. And the Paragol Rams do a solid job on third down. Loss of one. Loss of one. It's going to be fourth down and four. Fourth and four for the other Jackets. Fourth and four at the Paragool 10. Huge play in the football game. Win. Toss sweep to the far side. And the Tirago Rams bring it down, and they stop Win Cold on fourth down. Outstanding play by the defense. What there. a great job. Great job of the Paragool defense. Wow. That's two stops inside the 10-yard line. I'm telling line. you. Uh, boy, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I was getting a little concerned there. <laughs> well, I, I was too. <laughs> but uh, – Thanks. So great job of the Paragol defense. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the half. And I tell you, you when is going to look at themselves going, guys, we should have more points on the board absolutely, than this. Absolutely, absolutely. And that could come, you know, could come back to bite them later. But, you know, we've got to, got to obviously got to score to make that uh, factor. Well, the main thing that I would love to see us do here is just keep this a 6-0 game. Let's get some first downs here. Let's get this clock run down and not give them another chance at scoring here before the end of the half. 
Paragol now will have it first down and 10. Boy, that's just an outstanding defensive job of the guys. Way to go, guys. First down and 10. Snap is back. Paragol's going to throw it, and he's being oh. chased. Oh, my no. goodness. And that, that is going to be safety. No, let's see if he, I think it's start his forward progress. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, his forward one. progress is okay. going to be marked down at about the two yard line, but that play just was not going to work. Uh, had a complete breakdown in blocking, and that just forward progress is marked. Fortunate that that wasn't worse Absolutely, than it was. Absolutely, because that could have been bad. But you, I like the play call because you could have caught him off guard there. But uh, Wim was there to defend that. And, uh, boy, we're lucky to, to get away with not having a save. Loss of eight on the play, of eight on the play is going to make it second down and 18. But once again, Perigold needs to get out from underneath the, uh, the goal line here. Here comes a handoff this way, and Perigold's going to do well, and they just barely get it out of the end zone. In fact, I'm not sure that they did. Yep. And it's a safety. Yep. So a safety for win. Got in the end zone. Yellow Jackets get a safety. So Perigol just unable to get it out of the end zone, and Wynn's going to have a safety. And I think that was Corbin Bailey. Mm. Corbin thinks he got it out of the end zone. The officials say otherwise. Well, luckily, Jimmy, it makes the score is only eight to nothing since they uh, missed that extra point. So, well, it does, and it actually does a couple of things here. I mean, you can look at if you're going to look at this positive, you're actually going to be able to flip the field, flip the field a little bit, but you have to kick off from your own twenty. So again, you're going to give them field position um, in all likelihood, but it still keeps it a one-score game at eight to nothing. But uh, otherwise, Perigo was going to be looking at punting out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, here's important. We've seen Aiden Chipman get off some good kicks. So here's where his leg may come in valuable here, having to kick it so deep. If he can, to, you know, kick it back and flip the field position here. But, yeah, they're, you know, that was setting up for a, a, a bad situation for us, for sure. So Aiden Chipman, number four, will kick off from our own 20-yard line following the Safety, and once again, those two plays went the wrong direction. <laughs> well, luckily, it's like I said, you know, you only gave up two points. You're still exactly. this, you're still in this ball game. Exactly, and and really, this is this could work out in our favor here if we can yep. can can stop them and keep them off the scoreboard here before the end of the half. So you're right. We need a good kick by Aiden here. Marks his steps off. Approaches the ball, and here we go. And he does. He drills it, and he drills it all the way back to the win 20-yard line. You got to cover because seven's got the cover. ball. And Perigol cuts it inside. Oh, we missed a tackle right there, and that was crucial. And he may take it the distance. Let's see. Nope, Perigol's going to – well, he's still running, and he's going to score. And you could tell when we missed the tackle down here at about the 45-yard line yeah. that it was trouble. Well, we talked about the speed that Seven had earlier, uh, Christian Wren. And yep. I got some little special things going on with the LED lights on here. Yep. <laughs> yep, a little blinking of the lights. But, uh, wow, that is a huge turnaround in this game. Huge turnaround in this game. And Perigold gives up. The kickoff return for a touchdown with 2.26 to play in the first half. And Braden Maddox now to attempt the PAT. Ball is down, the kick is up. It looks good, and it is good. So that'll make the score win 15. Paragol nothing with 2.26 to play in the first half. And that's going to be a test for our kids. Absolutely, because you feel like at this point you almost need to get some points here before this first half's over because Wynn's going to get the ball to begin the second half. And, uh, you know, unless you want to open the second half with an onside kick and try to steal a possession here, well, this might critical try to get some kind of points, even if it's a, a field goal. Well, we talked about two minutes ago how important it was when we took the ball down here, keeping our own end to try to avoid – giving up points and we gave up the safety and a touchdown. So we end now two scores in front, 15 to nothing. And Perigo, we move the ball at times, but we haven't been able to, to finish drives. Right. 
And we talked about turnovers, Perugo with a key turnover, and then a special teams touchdown has made this 15 to nothing in favor of the home team. Long way to go, and we've got an opportunity. We need to make a good kickoff return here. See if we can set up pretty good field position, and uh, I think you might see Perigol open it up a little bit if we yeah. can get good field position. Yeah, I agree. You're going to have to. But, you know, like you said, it all starts with this return here. Maybe we can get a, a decent return here. And, uh, you know, still got uh, we got two timeouts left. So, yep. you know, you're in pretty good shape here. So let's see. Paragol acts like they think it's going to be an onside kick. I'd be really surprised if that were the case. We'll see. And it's not. It's going to be a little chip kick, and it's going to it's well placed because there's a dead spot out there. Mm -hmm. And Paragol better get after it. And Wynn's got it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And you saw Paragol shift, and that left a huge hole over there, and it was a well placed kick, and they recover it. And that's an outstanding job on their special teams. It and that's is. a critical mistake on our part. And, you know, that's, you know, a lot of times you don't pay a whole lot of time t uh, attention to special teams, but as you see right there, how critical they are in the ball game. And, and right there, two back to back plays by Wynn, and it puts them in another opportunity to score here for the half. First down and 10, football at the Paragol 28-yard line. Now the defense really needs to, to stiffen. And we got a timeout by the official. And I'm not sure what the problem is. What's going on either? We have, we've got injury on the sidelines over here. Apparently, that may be the case. Yeah, there's Brad. something going there's on over here. Somebody at down over. There. I'm not sure if it's a player or a fan. You know that uh, there's quite a few guys running off the sideline over there, and they may have uh, ran into a fan. Somebody is down. It is apparently a fan. Yeah, just right off the sideline there on right the Right off the five-yard line over there, yeah. So the official, and I think to his credit, wanted to make sure that that wasn't an issue before he marks the ball ready for play, and apparently he's good to go. So the football at the Paragol 28-yard line after Wynn recovers. It's basically a long onside kick if you want to look at it that That's way. Right. First down and 10. Here comes a toss sweep to the near side. That time, Perigold does a better job. They turn it in. The ball's in the ground. And Perigold's got it. <laughs> oh, what a great play by Perigold. They ripped it loose from Cameron Smith up in the air. And I believe that Jack Starnes caught it. Yes. Jack Starnes caught that thing in the air. Yeah, that's why you don't. You never quit playing hard because you never know what might, might happen there. But uh, – well, luckily, we're there. We can keep out of the way to out go, the Jack. Yeah. Was, and that is a huge turnover. Now we've said that a couple. Of times. <laughs> oh, what a great play by Paragol! They ripped it loose from Cameron Smith up in the air, and I believe that Jack Starnes caught it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a great play by Paragol! Now have two sixteen to work with. First down and ten on their own twenty. And this is going to be interesting to see what the approach is. Do you take a shot here, or are you going to be satisfied? to take it in at 15 to nothing and not risk any additional points on win having to start it deep in our own territory. So we'll see. Snap back, Chipman up inside. He's got some running room and a good push by the line. Solid push, that's about a five yard gain. Yeah, and I figure you just want to see Coach Phillips see what he could get on first down there and then make his decision based on that. So, you know, having to get that good game, they may try to go ahead and push the issue here. Minute 57, clock moving, second down and four following the six-yard gain by Chipman. Football at the Paragol 26-yard line. Snap is back. Chipman's got it. Follows his blocker now. He's stuck in the hole. Not much there. Probably no gain. It's going to bring up third down and four. And now win with three timeouts in their back pocket. 
a little bit surprised they didn't take one right there. Yeah, me too. In fact, I'm very surprised because they're letting a lot of time go off the clock. So third down and five for Paragold. Receivers split up both sides here. There's Lucas Dethers to throw the ball, and it's complete. And that's going to be a Paragold first down. Carter Blue on Carter the right Blue. sideline. Yep. So nicely executed pass play, little out pattern toward the sideline, and it's caught for a first down. Yeah, it gets out of bounds, stop the clock too. Yep. Pass complete. The thing you love about Coach Phillips' play call, and he, he puts the, the game in the hands of the players. We're getting a timeout here. So we've got the cart over there where the injured oh, okay. fan was over there, and that may yeah. be what they're wanting to. Yeah, they are close to the field, the, the sidelines there. I think this is going to be an official's timeout. But going back to that point, uh, you know, Coach Phillips, I love the way he puts the, you know, the the players had let them, uh, you know, decide the outcome of the game. He, you know, he believes in his guys, and his guys believe in him. And uh, you know, you, you love to see the calls that he makes, and. Uh, you know, he tends to be uh, aggressive at times, so be interested to see if he tries to take a shot here. Well, I think we're at a point in the field here where you could. You could. Uh, we're out to the 32-yard line, and we've just not been able to sustain drives. But, again, big plays and turnovers are the key here in the first half, and, and actually both sides because win is – Turned it over twice inside mm -hmm. the 10-yard line and a fumble down here yep. uh, with a chance to go in right before half. And we've been able to move the ball, but we just haven't been able to, to sustain a drive to this point. Yeah, Coach Phillips and uh, Coach Hess and the offensive staff are in the huddle on the sideline, and, and Coach – Appears to be drawing something up here, so <laughs> uh, we may see something a little extra here. It's one thing I saw last night with the junior high game at Batesville is, you know, th these kids have they really uh, have learned this offense, and, and it's evolved where, where now Coach Phillips can add little wrinkles here and there, and uh, the kids have such a good understanding of, of their roles, and that enables him to, to do a little bit of different wrinkles in, inside the game. And, uh, boy, you'd love to see you get some kind of points here, for sure, for the end of the half. Absolutely, because that would really solidify a momentum shift following that turnover by win. So the Rams come back out offensively. I see Mikey Peckrell. I see Cole Chipman. Copeland, number 80. First down and 10. The winners of the homecoming cup this year for homecoming is the senior. Ball mark pass. ready for play. Paragol with a snap. Inside run, Cole Chipman. And Cole's going to take it out for another solid five yard gain out to the 35 yard line. And I think now if Perigo's going to do something, it's going to be right here because the clock's moving with 45 seconds left to play in the first half. Perigo's not using timeouts. Right. So, and I don't really see a sense of urgency on the Perigo sideline. So I think Coach is going to be happy to go in and keep this to a 15-point deficit. Seventeen seconds, clock's moving. Paragles looking to throw, and we don't have enough time, and Chipman is going to be sacked in the backfield. Blocking kind of broke down that time. Well, and credit to Wynn's yeah. defense. They they backed up in coverage there, yeah. kind of a zone look on the in the backfield, yeah. and uh, so you know they, they were kind of prepared for a, a possible pass play there. And that should bring the first half to an end. Chipman brought down in the back. And it does. So, Wynn will take a 15 to nothing lead into the locker room at and the end of the first the half the first in a half. game that we I think we have to say, honestly, Wynn's kind of dominated the game from yep. an opportunity of scoring standpoint. And even though it's 15 to nothing, they fumbled twice inside our 10-yard line and down inside the 30. 
and uh, we need to be able to sustain some drives here in the second half to get back in the game. Yeah, you know, the, the good thing about halftime, they can go in and regroup. But we've done some good things, and there's been some positive things that, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the offense have really just got to finish the drives once they get going. But, uh, yep. yeah, defensively, yep. wins offense has really, uh, really got it rolling here. So the defense got to make some adjustments. All right, stay with us, everybody. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be back with you with about four, three, four minutes to go before the start of the second half. Stay with us here on the Paragol Ram Sports Network. Again, your halftime score, win 15, Paragol nothing. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the 2023 Wynn High School Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Trevor Geltner and Sean McCracken. It is led on the field tonight by drum majors Nashawn Warren and Alicia Lee. Drum major, is your band ready? Performing their 2023 show, The City with a Smile, the Wynn High School is proud to present the Wynn High School Marching Yellow Jacket.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Marching Yellow Jacket Band. The Marching Yellow Jacket Band would like to thank Tanya Cribs for feeding the band last week before the game and Kim McGuire for feeding the band this evening. The band's next performance will be at the ASBOA Region 4 Marching Assessment on Tuesday, October 24th at 7.15 at Cabot High School. Until then, go Jackie! <laughs> Wynn High School would like to welcome the classes celebrating their class reunion. The classes of 88, 93, Kappa Alpha Psi, class of 1990, 1983, 1999, 2003, 2001, 2008, and 1984. These classes signify that once you're a jacket, always you're a jacket.
Okay, we are back with you here from Wynn High School with about three and a half minutes to go before the start of the second half again. Our halftime score is Wynn 15 and Paragool nothing. Jimmy Dodge here along with Brad Hancock and Brad, the Rams have uh, had to play from behind in this one. And uh, we took the ball in the opening kickoff and had a good drive going and we had an unfortunate turnover that they took in for a score and Paragol just has been unable to sustain drives in the first half. And you combine the fact that Wynn, if I remember correctly, has two turnovers inside the 10 yard line and a fumble inside our 30 going in. Yep. And they have recovered an onside kick that was basically about a 30 yard onside kick and they right. did a great job there. This game could have been completely out of control, but the Rams, if you look at it from that perspective, or two scores down, and we need to come out with some fire here in the second half and stop these guys on three downs to get the ball back and make some things happen. And we're yeah. still in the game. No, absolutely. I agree with you. And uh, like you said, we're lucky probably to be in this position, but you have to feel like the coaches you know, right now are just trying to get, get the guys to regroup. Yep. And I feel like uh, probably the theme of the halftime is to, to finish uh, because, you know, if we could finish some of those drives, you're in this ball game. But, Boy, uh, you know, as win is probably going to, it's going to take this second half kickoff. The defense has really got to step up here and get them stopped, and we can get back in this ball game. 
Well, I think you can tell on your screen the theme is disco right now <laughs> here on the, at halftime with the light show. Pretty neat. It is really neat. And everything going on behind us back here is homecoming down at Wynn. But, uh, you know, again, Paragol has shown that we can move the football. We, we made a number of solid four, five, six-yard runs, but we simply just can't overcome five-yard penalties and the turnovers. Uh, have been a challenge for us. But again, I think that, uh, you know, the coaching staff saying, guys, look, this can be done. Let's go out, let's do it. And I'm looking for a renewed effort here in the third quarter. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, that one long drive we did have, you know, you just felt like we were going to break one at any time. And unfortunately, we turned the ball over there yep. and they, yep. they were able to score. But, yep. uh, you know, uh, you just got to come back and get back at it and uh, keep playing hard and see what happens. Absolutely. Again, you are watching the Perigo Rams Sports Network. We want to say, everybody watching at home, hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Special thanks to the PRSN crew. We've got a number of students here with us tonight. Thanks to all of them for helping make all this possible. We've got kind of a unique setup down in Wynn, as you can imagine. They don't have a full deck down here with everything after the tornado earlier this year, but they've done a remarkable job that we talked about at the start of the game in the community down here to regroup after a devastating storm. And, uh, you know, they've made us feel welcome here, and they've done a nice job of kind of getting things back in order. And uh, that's something that our football teams needs to do here in the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pay attention a little bit, get things back in order. But there's some scores around the league, Jimmy. Valley yeah. View's over uh, 10 to 7 up on Southside, at Southside. So that's, that's your uh, number one, number two battle, uh, no doubt. Uh, yeah. Nelton up 20 to 6 at Four City. And Batesville is actually down uh, 14 to six at Brooklyn. Wow. So that we, you know, we needed that to happen. Yep. And open the door for some possibilities here, but uh, you gotta take care of business the second half if you wanna have any hope. Absolutely. One of the great songs, the <laughs> Ozark Mountain Daredevils, if I remember correctly, Jackie Blue. Hadn't heard that one in a while. But uh, yeah, the Paragold is, you know, our kids, we, we've talked about having to learn how to win. And part of learning how to win is to, you know, when you have a game like we did last week and we had some success, you've got to still stay focused and yep. attention. And quite honestly, I think we lost a little bit of focus there in the first half. A great example was that kickoff that we left a big chunk of the field wide open and they executed it perfectly with a 20 or 25 yard kick. And yep. they came around down and, and, and and recovered it, and we were fortunate because it was a fumble that Jack Starnes recovered right down here in the air that kept him from uh, putting another touchdown on the board here late in the first half. So, again, the Rams, I think, can play better than we did in the first half, and there's some opportunities there, but let's see if we can come out and regroup, and I expect, this, I expect us to play hard here in the third quarter. Yeah, I do too. No reason not to believe that, uh, but like you said, you know, sometimes you can get shell-shocked by big plays, and uh, you just you got to put that behind you and continue to play hard. And like you said, Jack Starnes, the defense comes out and it looks pretty dire at that point, but then you get a turnover. Yep. So uh, you just got to continue to play hard and, and good things happen. We're down to about a minute and a half to play. Or excuse me, a minute and a half before the start of the third quarter, I should say. There's some folks from Paragol that made their way down here to Cross County this evening over here on the visitor side. The press box is actually on the visitor side now. It was, I guess, blown away back in the spring. And uh, the stands across the way have been pretty much full tonight, as you would expect, on homecoming. And they have a park basically <laughs> behind us with all kinds of tents and lights over there. And there's several reunions that are going on. And yeah. it's party city behind us. Over yeah, they've, they've got their own lighting. And it's almost like a little grove going on back yeah, behind us sure here. Is. <laughs> So good, great football atmosphere. Of course, you know, Wynn's got great tradition, so right. you would expect that. Wynn won the opening coin toss and elected to defer, so they will receive to begin the third quarter. You know, we talked about the possibility of maybe we might go onside here, uh, but, you know, I, I expect Wynn probably is expecting that as well. You know, you've seen Aiden execute a heck of an onside kick uh, last week, and uh, – you know, he's really worked on that, and I guess we're, we're going to kind of see how they line up here. They're, they're showing full return, but, right. well, you'd like to steal possession, uh, whether it become uh, um, to, by playing on special teams or over uh, another turnover. Over the second half, Yellow Jackets will be receiving 
it would not shock me if he tried to do it if they remain in their current setting. Yeah, because I, I honestly expect them to come out expecting the onside kick. Yeah. But right now they're in full return. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Aiden Shipman, number four to kick for Paragould. Rams will kick from the our right to our left, which is north to south. Neat for the Yellow Jackets. Number three, Tyler Holbrook. Number five, Jamar Jarrett. And number seven, Christian Wren. James Jarrett, number five, back deep for the Jackets. Aiden approaches the ball, and he's going to kick it away. He kicks it deep. It's a good kick, and it's going to go in the end zone. Good kick. So, nice job by Aiden Chipman, and that'll make wins start out first down to 10 on their own 20, and that is exactly what you wanted to have happen. Yeah, so right now you want the defense to come out and, and get them stopped on as quickly as you can, hopefully three and out, and get this ball back and see if we can get back on the on the winning side here and get some, get some points. Wins quarterback is a senior, number 12, John Watson. He's been effective in the first half. He's been a good runner. They've not been really a threat throwing the football. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets and the Yellow Jackets 20. So here we go. First down and 10 for win. Watson's going to keep it. Goes around left end. And he's going to advance the ball out over the 30 to about the 31 yard line for an 11 yard gain on first down. Yeah, a counter quarterback keepers. All that was, I showed motion to the right hand side, and uh, Watson just keeps the ball over the left side. And good physical runner with that quarterback, and uh, all the offense starts with him. So, first down and 10 for win on their own 31. He might have been in motion. Straight hand off up inside. Good hard run. It's going to be brought down. Pretty good job by Xander Hinkle, I believe. And it was. Xander gets up a little bit gimpy, but I think he's okay. Three-yard gain on first down, so second and seven. Yeah, Xander plays so hard, but, boy, that inside dive, you got to get that stop because that's the first leg of their triple option offense. Second down and seven. Ball is on the 34 win. Ball on the 34-yard line. And we've got a whistle before the play starts, and that might be yep. it's yep. going to be an offsides against win. So they were lined up improperly, and that'll be a five-yard mark off against win, and that helps our cause. Yeah, for sure. And so far, you know, first half we didn't see a whole lot of, whole lot of flags there. So, uh, boy, that's a, a big call for us here to, to get the defense in a positive situation. Puts them behind the chains a little bit on second and 12. So defense needs to take advantage of the opportunity here. Jackets up to the line of scrimmage. Watson under center. Takes the snap. Toss back to number seven. Turns it up inside. And Rams do a pretty good job. And that'll be a short gain. And, again, that's uh, Christian Wren. He's a 10th grader, and he's a speedster. Boy, I'm telling you, he's a good-looking running back for them. And they tried to get him around the edge, but luckily the made a little bit of adjustment there and then got him bottled up that time. Gain of five. So it's a gain of four to five so yards. It's going to bring up third down and eight. And here is a big opportunity for our defense. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, just like us, they, they will throw the ball. They pick and choose when they do. But Watson can throw the ball, and you may very well see a passing situation here. So third and eight, Jackets up to the line of scrimmage. Man in motion, and they are going to throw it. He open. throws it, and he's got a man out here, and it is incomplete just off the outstretched arms of the intended receiver, who was number four, Braden Maddox. Boy, he came open there for a while, and the, yep. the pass just overthrown a little bit, yep. honestly, because he was yep. wide open. And yep. probably if it was thrown to the inside of the field, it would have been a touchdown. Yep. Our defensive backs made a little progress on it, but it was initially right. It was open. So fourth down and eight. Let's see what Wynn elects to do. I would suspect they would punt, but maybe not. We'll see. No, they're going to drop back and punt. Yeah, more of a quick kick uh, formation. We've, we've got nobody back deep. 
And it's an end over end kick that's going to hit and take a wind bounce. Oh. And my goodness, it's going to roll for 20 yards. And again, a little surprised we didn't have somebody back deep there. Yeah, yeah, they, they lined up in that quick kick formation, yeah. which is just the punter is just a little bit closer. So you do have to respect the possibility they may oh, fake yeah. it, but I, I, I'm agree, agree with the field position there. They're probably going to kick it away. Yeah, that it. ball bounced at about the 35-yard line and winds up at the 12. But hats off to the defense. You, yep, had, to, yeah. you had to come out and get them stopped, yep. and we did. Uh, not the greatest field position, but uh, if the offense will come out and with the right attitude, we can move the ball here. Well, just like I said, the defense did exactly what we asked of them. That's shut them down on the first drive. Right. Take the ball back at our own 12-yard line, 13-yard line. So, see if we can just execute. And we've got a whistle. Mm. And we've got a false start. And, boy, those are the kind of things that you just can't have. Not sure what the call is. Yeah, and our it's guys a, are confused as to who it's, moved. It's an illegal against procedure Rand. against us. Hmm. Okay. So, five-yard mark off will put us behind the chains. First and 15, First and 15. with the football Ball at the eight-yard line. Penalties kind of – people are still kind of scratching their head on what that was. First down and 10. First and 15, rather. Paragon almost illegal motion right there. A little shift, and now we've got another whistle. And that's going to be a delay of game. So two penalties right out of the bat, right out of the gate for Paragol, and we go backwards 10 yards. Yeah, and that's that makes it first and 20 yeah, inside you, our five. You know, that, that first uh, legal procedure penalty, I feel like it got our guys. <laughs> they, they should just put it behind them right there because it led to two penalties. So you really put yourself in the hole here. First down and 20. Snap back. Perigo with a run, and it's going to be Chipman, and he'll take it out close to the five-yard line, maybe just out over the five. It's going to be a short gain, maybe a yard or two at most, and bring up second down and long. Second and 18, they say. Second and 18 for the Rams from the Rams six. Football just outside the Perigo five-yard line. Ergle set, snap back. Mikey Peckles got it up inside, and he'll pick up two, maybe three yards. Obviously well short of the first down, and it's going to bring up third down and 14. Yeah, and if you don't pick up a few more yards here, you're going to be punting out of the end zone. So, you know, not, not a great situation here, but, uh, boy, it's an uh, important third down early in the second half. And when able to flip that field position on that punt, mm -hmm. kind of put us in a hole and two penalties back us up further. Third down and long. Snap. And here comes a run, and Perigo's got a great play here. This is going to get a first down. And it is Caden Calhoun. Great run. And he's going to take it all the way. I believe that was a, that was a direct snap to Calhoun yes. there. And we've seen that play a couple times work effectively. And, uh, you know, probably wins Thanks. defense is keying on Chipman there. So. Hey, that is a tremendous call, and that is a huge play. Oh, Lord, it was. That really sets things up here because Perigo was looking, it was looking bleak there on that play because we were third down and long, but Caden Calhoun, great coach by, Co I mean, great call by Coach Phillips, and all of a sudden first down and 10 at our own 42. Absolutely. See if that puts a little step, pup, a little, uh, extra step for us here. Snap back, Cole takes it up inside, nothing there. Yeah, he penetration. Is, he is absolutely swallowed for maybe a loss of a yard, and that one wasn't going very far. Yeah, I'm like you after that big play, the offensive line coming up to the line with a little bit of extra energy, it looked like to me. But, boy, they, they're giving up some penetration, so we've got to get these guys blocked here. Uh, you know, and Cole, Cole showed some ability to, to run the ball and, and was close to breaking one in the first half, so we've got to continue to do that. 
get the guys blocked up front. Second down 11. Paragol on their own 41-yard line now. Snap back. Mikey Peckerel up inside, and he's knocked down after about a three-yard gain. He'll take it out to about the 43-yard line. And it's going to bring up third down and eight. Number 16. Yeah, and hats off to Wynn's defense. They put us in a lot of third and longs, and that's yep. not where we want to be. And uh, But it started with that first down, not being able to get much there. Yep. Uh, so, once again, another big third down play. Clock moving, 7.42 to play in the third quarter. Win leads 15 to nothing. Over Perigol. Perigol was able to stop one on their first drive of the second half, but took over on her own 12. And after deep in the territory, and after two penalties, we've been able to get it out over the 40. Here's a snap back to Chipman. Chipman up inside. And Cole is going to be brought down short of the first down at about the 46 yard line. So it's going to bring up fourth down. And let's see what Coach Phillips elects to do here. He's going to send the punt team out. Yeah, it looks like. Number 10, Cole Chipman on the carry. Gain of three. Fourth, fourth down six. and six for Paragould. You know, we saw the importance of field position on that, you know, their uh, special teams. So, you know, if we can get a deep kick here and uh, defense play well, you know, a, a good call early in this second half. But, uh, you know, at some point we're going to have to get some points on the board here. So play clock's down to five seconds. Chipman in punt formation. And it's a, a fake. fake. It's a fake. And Perigo runs it, and it's, it's going to be a first down. He got it. Sean Hood, I believe. <laughs> Sean Hood around the right side, and it's going to be a first down for Perigo. Guts, he called there. Wow. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't know who had the ball because I saw that he had two or three different backs moving some misdirection there on that fake. I think it was Sean Hood. Yeah. No, Sean ended yeah. up with the ball, yeah. but, but I thought it was coming around the yeah, left side it, here. It did. It did. Great call for Coach Phillips. Yeah. And, I mean, I, had to have I, it. you could see it. I mean, Perigol really needed to maintain possession had here and do it. something with this drive. Yeah. So, we keep it alive, move it into win territory, have it first down and 10 at the 46. Snap back. Chipman inside handoff. Perigol nothing there. Eric Copeland is going to be swallowed up mm. for no gain. Yeah, we saw that was a wrinkle we added last week and used quite a bit, and it was effective. But I'm sure Wynn uh, was prepared for that play uh, in their defensive study this week. Gain of a yard. He did well to get that. So second down and nine. Football's at the Wynn 46-yard line. Second and nine. Second and nine for the Rams. Got some confusion in the Wynn secondary. Yeah, we've got two uh, receivers split out both sides here. Snap back to Chipman, follows his blocker, takes it up inside, makes a spin move, and he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. He'll only be about a yard short of the first down, and that's going to bring up third down and short. Yeah, Cole took a pretty good lick there, but, boy, I love his running style. He's so patient, and he follows his lead blockers and uh, you know waits for his opportunity. So a good run by him, and hopefully it'll make us a, a makeable third down. Third down and one. Mikey Peckerel in the back field with Lucas Dethridge. Trying to draw him here. Yep. Now we're going to shift. Snap. Same play. And same play. And Caden <laughs> Calhoun was one step away from breaking it. So that's the same play you saw earlier where Calhoun broke that big run. Caden Calhoun, one Calhoun. step in it. Hey, let's credit the kid from Win because if he doesn't make that tackle, no, nobody does. 100 percent And you know, and that and that shift enabled you to to disguise that a little bit, I believe. So great call by Coach Phillips. So the Rams have moved it all the way down to the win 28 yard line. Cole Chipman back in the game. Chipman takes Going around the right side, and not much there. They strung that out, and he didn't. He wasn't able to turn it up, and that'll be no gain Chipping on first okay. down. And he looks a little gimpy to me. Yeah, he took a pretty good lick yeah. on the previous play he was okay. in on, and you're going to have trouble beating uh, Win on the edge anyhow with their team speed. But, right. uh, but Bull Cole, you know, no doubt he's going to give it all he's it got. Out. Yep gotten it out, but he just looks like he's stung that either ankle a little bit or something. But yeah. Second down and 10. See if the Rams can come up with a good play here on second and long. Snap back, ball dropped. 
And that's going to be, that just throws everything off, and that's going to be dropped for a loss. And a little extracurricular at the end of that play, and the officials missed it, I believe. Yeah. And officials really weren't in a good position to make that call. Two, Corbin Bailey brought down by Abdul Fall. So a loss back to the 33-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and 14. Yeah, and you feel like you're in four-down territory here, but, boy, you'd like to have gotten awesome a little bit of that uh, on that previous play. Yep. But uh, like you said, the snap it was a little bit mishandled, and that threw off the timing of everything. Yeah. Coach Phillips wants a timeout. He's going to bring the offense over and discuss it. Clock is stopped with 3.29 to play in the third quarter. Paragool stopped and went on their first drive. We've had the ball ever since and have taken it from our 10-yard line, really, all the way down to the win side of the field down to about the 32-yard line that faced third down and 14. Yeah, consider the hole we duck put ourselves in to begin yeah. this drive and, and uh, a couple of big third down plays, uh, big runs by Calhoun there to get us in a spot, you know, where we could potentially put some points on the board here. So I'm sure Coach Phillips is really uh, coaching these guys up, trying to finish this drive right here. Well, I think you're exactly right. This has to be four down territory with 3.29 to play in the third quarter and you're down 15 zip. Hang on to that ticket stub you have. Bring it by Red River Ford Toyota for a $5 discount on your next oil change. Well, you know, with three and a half minutes, left, the clock's not a factor, but at some point it's going to be. And, uh, boy, you just feel like, you know, the way this drive's going, you really got to capitalize we here. Need, we need points here. Yeah, and yep. then, you know, you know, you could consider an onside kick or something that like that not later on, but, uh, well, right now you've, uh, if you can punch it in, it'll it'll make your game plan for the rest of the game a little bit easier. Deathridge, Mikey Peckrell. 30-14 for the ring. In the backfield. Snap. And Perigold runs the same play to the opposite side, and this time wins on it. Yep. With Caden Calhoun. 16, Peckrell on the carry. I think it was Caden Calhoun, Game wasn't it? Two. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like a, basically a little push pass, what yeah. they're calling that. Yeah. It's like uh, sometimes you see the tight ends run those on the inside, but that's really kind of a push pass out to the outside where Calhoun's lined up at the H-back spot. So the ball's at the 30, make it fourth down and 12, and now Cole Chipman comes back into the game. And you almost have to believe this is going to be a pass. Yeah, it's going to be a, more than likely be a pass, and it's more than likely hopefully going to be something a little extra here. So interesting to see what this call, unless you're going to try to get five cheap. From the yellow jacket, 30. Snap. Cole runs out. He's got a man open. Carter Ballou's out there if Carter can get to it. No, and he can, but let's see a pass interference. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, he got hit yep. before the ball. He was uh, trying to go for the ball there. Yep, and the uh, back judge got it. But that'll just be, that'll be 10 yards, right? Should so be a 15-yard 15 15, penalty. okay, so, so it will be first this, down. This should be a first down. Okay. With high school just marking that from uh, the original line of scrimmage, you have to <laughs> – Yeah, <laughs> it's not it, like, is, it is a first down. So good. that is a huge play. Keeps our drive alive. Good job by Carter Ballou. He was – to be honest with you, I'm not sure he could have gotten there to the ball. Probably but, not. But, it looked but, like it was thrown behind him yeah. a little bit, but he, he definitely got whacked from behind. And that gives Perigol another set of downs. First down and 10. Down at the win 15-yard line. Heck of a drive. Just need to finish it. Snap. There's Mikey Peckrell straight up the middle. Pretty good push. Yeah. That's the best push we've had tonight, I think, Brad. Well, you know, Wins defense has got to be a little fatigued here. This is, they've been on the field quite a bit here, yep. and then you, that's where you see a back like Perkle come be a factor because he's such a physical runner. So That's like, a seven-yard gain on first down. That's solid. That's down to about the eight-yard line. So I, I give them a big dose of Peckrell and Calhoun and, and, and see if they can stop it. Let's call it second down and three for Perigold inside the win 10-yard line for the first time tonight, I believe. Snap. Peckerel again. Bucky makes a one-man miss. He'll take it down to about the six, maybe the five. He's going to be close to a first down, maybe just a hair short. Going to be a yard short. Third down and one. Game two, third and one. We've talked about it all year. He does such a good job of falling forward, and that's critical when you get in these situations, especially you got a third and one. You can pick a first down if, even if you don't score. So, hey, I continue to pound the ball with him. But it uh, looks like we got Sam Hunt. Entered into the ball Sam game. Hunt, number seven in the game. Dozer set. Yep. 
Snap back to Chipman, follows his blockers up inside. Yep. He's got the first down, and he's close to the goal line. He is at the one-yard line. And we got a late flag. Oh, my goodness. And let's see what this is about. I believe Coach Phil thought we were in the end zone. I'm seeing on the, the extra point team there, but I don't know what we've got here. Personal foul against Paragould. Wow. Hmm. That's a big one. Wow, is all I can say on that. I'm not sure what the call was. The official threw it, looked like after the play. 15 yard penalty. All the way back to the 20 yard line. And you just can't do that. No. You're at the one yard line. So now it's third and 15. Snap back, Chipman, inside handoff, nothing there. Yeah. Sam Hunt is just walloped right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they faked that dozer uh, run to Chipman to the right side and encountered with Sam, but uh, Wynn was good, did a good job staying home to sniff that out. So it's going to bring up fourth down and 15 at the 20 yard line. Again, I just can't get over that fact remember. that we had the ball down there on the one yard line and then a 15 yard personal foul penalty. And I didn't see it. And I, we got to go back and look at it. And I don't know if you did, but I did not I see did, it. I didn't either. We were, you know, we were running the ball in there heavily. It looked like, uh, you know, there was a scrum. It looked like we were all possibly in the end zone. But uh, I don't know if we kind of got baited into something or what, but nonetheless, that's just a crucial penalty and you can't have those. So now fourth down and 15, but still a chance. Have to think we'll, uh, you got to go really for the end zone here. You don't need the end zone to, to get a first down, no. but you got to get it inside the five. Boy, this has been such a nice looking drive too. We've overcome third downs. We've overcome some penalties. We've just moved the ball, you know, from our own 10 yard line all the way down to the one yard line. And then the critical 15 yard penalty moves it back. And after no gain, we're hit with fourth and 15. 47 seconds left in the third quarter. We've had the ball most of the yeah, third quarter. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's just a tough call right there. And uh, I don't know. Well, like I say, I, li I like to see what exactly what happened because, uh, you know, I, no the, doubt it was a physical football the, play. The official, <laughs> the only thing I could see was the official signal personal foul. It's almost like targeting. He pointed to the guy's yeah, head. Yeah, or, yeah, and, or like a blindside block yeah. signal. But, but we weren't any, there was not anybody split out wide enough to do that. So. Fourth and 15. So fourth and 15 from the yellow jacket 20. From the win 20 yard line. Let's see what the Rams come up with offensively. Rams are set. Snap back to Deathridge. He looks to throw, throws it in the end Open zone. Again. And the it's, it's another yep. interference call. Same thing. And the same thing. Yeah, Carter Blue was tackled by three guys out there. Yep. And it really wasn't necessary from no. their part. But, you know, the way the high school rules are, you know, <laughs> pass interference is not necessarily a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> uh, if well, this should be another first down for us. If it's not, it's going to be fourth down and very short. Right. Yeah, because so they showed, yeah, they showed four no, to 15 gonna, to go. Well, they're putting the ball down at the 10. So I'm not sure. First and 10 for the Rams no, from the yellow jacket. Team. Is it first and 10? Uh, the, the, I don't believe The PA guy says first and 10. I don't think that's correct. And there's some discussion with the head ref and Coach Phillips here on the appealing team. He's marked on the field, fourth and five. I'm confused. Mm. I'm, I'm confused. Uh, on the mark off of that. I'm, it was fourth and 15. Yep. It's now fourth and five after a 10-yard penalty. 
Hmm. I don't know, folks, at home. Not sure about that one. Football's at the 10-yard line. They say it's fourth and five. Here we go. Yeah, clock's running. You're going to have to run the play here. 12 on the shot – or the shot clock on the 40-second clock. Ball is snapped. Shipman takes it up in there, and he's going to be short. So, Wynn's going to take over. Yellow Jackets hold and take over on down. And the Ram drive will come to an end. Inside the win 10 yard line at about the nine. Mm. Well, Brad, the Rams took it from one end of the field to the other, but we didn't get any points, and that was crucial. And although we did get two interference calls, one we're not sure marked off the yardage, but the, the, the critical ones when we got the ball down to the one yard line and have a 15 yard yeah, penalty. Right, That's exactly. the, the crucial one. So, win now, first down and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. And that's going to be a handoff inside, not much there. You know, he's going to, he's going to squeeze out three or four yards, make it second down, and they're going to make it second down and six. Let's see if Wynn elects to run the quarter out. I think that they will as we're at 17 seconds left. 40, Cole Westbrook on the carry. Game five. So it's going to be second down. I'm going to say six instead of five, and that's going to bring the third quarter to an end. And... Paragol Rams will continue to trail 15 to nothing as we enter the fourth Second quarter here from Wynn, Arkansas. And again, that was a really critical drive there that we just witnessed because the Rams did such a good job of overcoming adversity and some some uh, long third downs to take it really from about our 10, 12 yard line all the way down at one point to the one yard line. And again, that 15 yard penalty for a personal foul took us back. We actually overcame that once with a pass interference penalty, but at the end, it wasn't enough, and Wynn stops us on fourth down, takes over. And right at this point, we can just – we've got to make sure that we hopefully keep these guys three and out here and yeah, you try gotta, to get the ball back. You've got to get back as quickly as possible. And, you know, uh, I, heck, I don't, I'm not going to lie, I'm frustrated right now. So I can imagine the players are, but they've got to get focused here and then get these guys stopped. And, uh, you know, if you can score here, you know, you're pitching a situation, not back to the onside kick look or something – but uh, if you can get them turn, turned over quick enough here, uh, you know, get, get, try to get some points quickly on offense. But starts right here with the defense. The only thing that I can think of on that other mark off was, it, was if it was marked half the distance to the goal. But I don't know. We'll have to go back and look at it. But, again, like we said, even in spite of all that, the key thing is that we had it in our, our grasp and we had a critical penalty down there at the one yard. Yeah, and right now you can't dwell on that. you nope. got to put that behind you, and defense has no. got to play. Cause, uh, you know, Two score game. All yep. we need is a stop, yep. and get another score, and, you know, we can make a run at this late. So, Wynn has the ball. Inside handoff. Nice, nice. job by Caden Calhoun. Wow, great tackle. Good, Good job, Caden, and he wasn't the only one. There was – couple of young men on that play. That's still a good game by Wynn yeah. there, but, boy, he was there to meet him in the hole on that dive. It's going to bring up third down and a long yard. We'll call it two. They need the 20 for a first down or just shy of it. Third down and one from the 18. Football at the 18-yard line in Wynn territory. Yeah, we already they're already showing they're not in any big hurry to do anything here. So. Late snap. And they're just going to take it up inside the quarterback. Yeah, he is. And I'm not sure. He, well, he did. They're going to give him the 20-yard line. So that'll be a first down for win. Just a straight quarterback sneak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Watson's a good-sized boy at the quarterback there. So, you know, if he can get just a little bit of push, he can pick up a yard or two pretty easy. So first down and 10 for win. Football at the win 20-yard line. Motion, straight handoff up inside, and he busts through there. And boy, I tell you what, Number 10, Dante, Smith, on Dante the Smith was one step away from taking that one to the house. Yeah, you're right. Game of six yards. Six yard pickup, make it second Seven, down and four. And four. So, one thing about win, they've not had a lot of penalties tonight, they had some turnovers. Right. 
but uh, offensively, they've not put themselves in a bad position with many five-yard false starts or anything. No, and, they, and like us, they have to to stay on schedule. So. Yep. And off inside, nothing doing. Yep. Great job with the Rams that time. Solid defensive play up inside. 21, Cameron Smith. Sam Hunt. No game. And... Did I see Cash Wigington in there? I think I did. Yeah, I think so. Cash with a solid stop. So it'll be interesting to see the play call here from Wynn. If they tried to sneak something and uh, pass here in and, and really, uh, you know, try to get this first down and ice some more clock. Or, well, or critical play for the defense. Third, third down and yep. four. Wynn's going to yep. throw it. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Throws it across the middle, and it's caught. Yep. Oh, my goodness. They caught us. And that's going to be a win touchdown. Unless Caden Calhoun can catch him, and he is giving it everything he has. But it's not enough. And the win, Yellow Jackets. Probably uh, tie knot on this one with a touchdown pass from Watson. Well, you, you know, I, Dante Smith. I kind of felt like that was coming because, you know, win right there in that position had a, had a chance to – to take a knockout punch if possible and, and really had nothing to lose on that. So uh, not too terribly surprised with a, a heck of a call and play by them. Well, it was well executed. I mean, the kid made a good throw and he was there. He caught it on the run and once he did, we had good effort to try to get there, but we were just too far behind and yep. that's no good on the extra point. So the score is going to remain win 21 and Paragol nothing with nine minutes and 21 seconds left in the game. And Brad, as you kind of take a second and assess this, it's been big plays for win. And uh, whether it be the kick return, the fumble return, long touchdown pass, and I go back to when it's 15 to nothing and we've got the ball at the one yard line and and uh, we draw a personal foul penalty and then from that point on it's been uh, it's been all win. Yeah, because that, that was really a big momentum changer there. We had all the momentum going. You feel like we're going to definitely punch the ball in the score there and, and, and probably put a lot of pressure on win to, in the remainder of this game. But, uh, you know, they, they were able to get the ball back there after that penalty and Got the opportunity to take a big swing at us, and that's what they did. Yeah, credit to win coach. That's a great call in that situation because I really wasn't looking for it. You knew they could do it, but yeah. uh, it, well, was, it was well executed. You know, they, they lull you to sleep with that dive, 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 and they'd run it up the middle there and, you know, feel like our guys were sneaking up a little bit too. And uh, But anyway, great call and execution by them. So when will kick off? Paragould. See if we can get a chance to return this. Looking to see who was deep. That's Corbin Bailey who's going to take it back inside the five-yard line. Corbin takes it right up the middle of the field. And he'll be swallowed up at about the 20-yard line. So Paragould will start first down and 10 from our own 20. And trailing 21 to nothing. Be interesting to see kind of what the approach is. Yeah, because you know, you know, the, the base of our offense not not built to come from. No. A, uh, and you know, I think we'll probably stick to what we're trying to do. I yeah. mean, I, I don't think we're going to try to just air this thing out three times. I think that you know, let's see if we can. You've got to. You could, you could break one, you know, yeah. uh, for sure. But uh, you know, we're not going to line up in something different and start throwing the ball down the field. I don't believe no. uh, either. First down and ten at the twenty. They are going to split out Carter, and uh, let's see who we got out to the left side. But we got receivers both sides here. So it's Copeland out there, I believe. Okay. Nothing else. Get some guys out of the box. Snap back, inside run, and it will squeeze out a couple of yards. That's about it. Who Number was that? Was that Cole? I think it was Cole. So two yard gain, second down and eight for Paragool. Second and eight. Again, Paragool with two split receivers. 
Etheridge is going to throw it, throws it out to Carter Ballou, and he's immediately tackled. And that's not going to be a large gainer, maybe two yards. So that's going to bring up third down and five for Paragould. With the football at the 26, almost 27-yard line, make it third and four. For Paragould, clock's moving. Eight minutes, 10 seconds left to play in the game. Win 21, Paragould nothing. Rams trailed at the half, 15 to nothing, and have been unable to put any points on the board here in the second half. And there's an inside run and just not much doing. Number 10, Cole Chipman. Cole Chipman really has no room to work with that time, and that's going to bring up fourth down and three. And this is kind of an interesting call here. Yeah, you don't have much choice here yeah. you know, with the, the clock ticking here. you got to try to pick up this first down. Trying to draw them off sides right now. But. Yep, and I don't think they're going to bite. Chipman calling signals. And they are going to snap it. And Paragul inside is, let's see, it's going to be close. And yeah, they're going to say a first okay. down. Well, good job. Okay. Mikey Peckrell okay. picks up a first down. Nice hard run by Mikey. Yeah, so come up there and tried to draw them off sides initially. And uh, like you said, Jimmy, wind was biting, <laughs> biting on that. So but, uh, good job to pick I, up the first down. But I really think they did not think we were going to run it there. I thought they, after we kind of hesitated, I didn't think they'd think we were going to Probably not. So first down and 10 for Perigold. Snap back. Inside run. Mikey Peckrell. Mikey breaks three. Let's go. Mikey, 40. Michael, 30. Michael, 20. Get that there. Michael's got a chance to score, and he is gone. Great Touchdown, job. Touchdown, Paragool. Hey, good burst Mikey of speed. Mikey Peckrell by. showed some really yeah. good speed. Yeah, because he, he actually pulled away there. So He sure did. Man, Mikey Peckrell. Great job, Mikey. Here comes a replay on it. And here we go. You see him break through there, breaks a tackle. And from this point on, man, he showed some speed. Absolutely. Pulled away. He sure did. Great job, Mikey. And again, this is a just an this is another uh, attribute of Coach Phillips' teams. They don't quit. No. No. Make something positive happen. Here comes the extra point. The ball is down. It is a kick. Good. It is a mile high, and it went through. <laughs> Good job, Eskinder. Eskinder Michael knocks it through there, so that makes it 21 to seven, and still 6:49 left to play. And you know, hey, if you uh, steal a possession here, who knows? Well, like you talked about, we didn't expect them to to really get out of our base, and absolutely, you know, run, a play you've been running all night. Yep. Mikey hits it up the middle, and you know, typically as a physical runner, we've not seen him break one this year. But going back in junior high, he, he's got good speed. We've seen it before, and keeps pounding inside and breaks breaks out for a big run. So great job by the young and offensive line to open that up. We've got a John Deere tractor. So 6.49 to play in the ball game, win 21, Paragul 7. So let's get started. And we can talk a lot of the what ifs, and we will, but right now Paragul needs to continue to focus on what is at hand. And I think that Wynn certainly is expecting an onside kick yeah. here. And it may sort of depend on how they align as to what we're going to do. Well, the clock's not your friend, so you're going to be predictable about the things you've got to do, just the execution of it. So if we can See execute what? it. I'm surprised how wins line up. they got five kids mm -hmm. right there together in the middle of the field, and outside the, the hashes you've got open territory. They're now, they're gonna, okay. now they're going to spread out. They're a little uncertain about what we're going to do there, too. They're, they're full return. So Aiden Chipman to kick for Paragool. He's going to kick it deep. Good kick. It is going to go all the way back to inside the five yard. Now, now we need to cover. Dick that young man in there. Right there, good job. Yeah. So we bring him down short of the 30 yard line. Perigo does a little better job with kick coverage there. So Wynn will have it first down and 10 at their own 28 yard line with 6.43 to go in the ball game, but now it's only a two score game. Mm -hmm. The one time out, you're looking at, you've, you've yep. just about got to get a three and out here. Yeah. So, Paragol needs to continue to play hard, try to knock that thing loose. Anything can happen. Just keep playing hard. Yep. First down and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. 
John Watson, who's done a good job at quarterback tonight for them. Now Watson's going to cup it inside, keeps it, breaks a tackle. And it. he breaks another tackle. Perigo doesn't do a good job there getting him on the ground, and that is a long gain. I think Perigo went for the ball more than the tackle. Yeah, I agree. And allowed him to get about another 20 or 30 yards down the field. Well, like you just said, he's a great player for them, and, and you don't expect uh, anything but uh, them to put the ball in the their best player's hands at this point in the ball game. And so we expect a heavy dose of him running for the rest of this game. But uh, Rams kind of let down a little bit defensively there. We need to get him on the ground a little better. So, football at the 36-yard line. First down and 10 for win. Straight handoff up inside. There you go. Again, Caden Calhoun mm -hmm. along with – is that Lawrence getting up? Yep. Yep. Yeah, good to see him back in there tonight. Michael Lawrence, been re, uh, he's been injured for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, a couple weeks at least. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we've missed him. He, he's uh, he's always been good on that defensive line, and and uh, he was in offense some, but coming back here, he's mainly played defense. So Three-yard gain, so it's going to be second down and seven for the Yellow Jackets. Man in motion. Straight dive handoff inside. There's not much there. Pergil stacks that up well. Little or no gain. 21, Cameron Smith on the carry. Cameron Smith takes it up inside. Gain of two. The problem with them being able to flip the field on that big run there, even though you've got them in third down here, they're probably very well going to go for it on fourth. So, third uh, and five. Got to yep. defend two plays here more than likely. Third and five. Clock's moving to five and a half minutes to play. If we could hold them for no gain here, it would bring up a really interesting call mm -hmm. for them on fourth down. Yep. So we'll see what Wynn elects to do on third down. They're going to throw it. They throw it, and they're going deep with it. And they've got I'm a man out. out there, and it's caught. We kind of got beat deep out there, and it's going to be a long completion on a John Watson pass, pass to, Christian Wren. to Christian Wren, and he got behind our defense, and it's a completion down to about the six-yard line. Well executed. Yeah, great play call by their coach. And hats off to Coach Toddy on that. Uh, you know, they, they lull you to sleep with that inside run. And then, uh, you know, when they do pass it, it's very effective. So first down and goal for the Jackets, who have done a good job answering the Paragol score. See if we can keep them out of the end zone here. Straight handoff up inside. And not much there. Paragol does a pretty good job. Knocking them down at about the five. Yeah, you can see several of the guys trying to strip the ball there, yep. and you know that's what we got to try to do here. Gain of two. Second and goal from the four. Second and goal. Ball is inside the five. We'll call it the four. Four and a half minutes to play in the game. Watson has. The Jackets up to the line of scrimmage. Man in motion. He's just going to keep it up inside, and it's a win touchdown. touchdown so Watson takes it in the end zone from about five yards out, and that will extend the win lead to 27-7 to with the extra point to come. Yeah, heck of an answer by their offense, like you yep. said, Jimmy. And yep. uh, after we, you know, get points on the board, uh, you know, from their point of view, it's exactly what you want your offense to do is come back and respond. Well, they did, and they hit us with about a, what, a 40-yard quarterback run there yeah. that really put them in a good scoring position. They go ahead and take it in. So, extra point attempt to come. Ball is down. The kick is up, and it is no good again. He's hooked a couple of those. So, the score will remain 27-7 to in favor of win with 4-10 to play. And the Rams will get the ball back, and we'll see uh, if we can do something positive offensively here late in the game. Hang on to that ticket stub you have. Bring it by Red River Ford Toyota for a $5 discount on your next oil change. Well, Brent, I think we've seen 
some positive things tonight, but boy, I think that first half kind of put us behind the eight ball a little bit. And yeah, but again, even at that, you come out and we've talked about it several times. We had just such an outstanding drive to go almost the length of the field and get inside their five. And I think Cole had been tackling about the one yard line when the penalty was called. And that 15 yards back, we just simply weren't able to overcome. And right. Oh, you look at that play. If we had scored right there and you, and you saw what Peckerel was able to do later, yeah. Yeah. you're absolutely in this ball game. And uh, you had would have had all the momentum at that point. But, uh, you know, a critical penalty there. Uh, you know, I don't know what else you can say about it, but really turned the game for us. So, Paragul, Bailey deep. I think Cole's back there with him. When kids are pretty excited, and they should be at this point. That kick's going to go all the way back to the end zone. So, Paragul will start first down and 10 at the 20. The end zone. First and 10 for the Paragul Rams. From the and again, Rams Brad, it's not a lack of effort. I mean, the, the kids are playing hard. No. Uh, but uh, we've just made some – we've had some turnovers and critical penalties. Yeah, and that's what's so frustrating at times because you see how hard they work and how hard they, they you know, pour it all out there on the field. And, uh, you know, you, see, you need to get a break here and there for sure. But, uh, like I said, go back to that one play. If we had a scored right there, this is a completely different ball game at this point. To play in the fourth yeah, especially, fourth at, you know, game. coming in the half, 15 nothing. You, you stopped in the first series. You go all the way down to that point, and that was your opportunity to really get back in the game. And Well, you did everything that probably the yeah. coaches planned to do at halftime. You executed to that point, so, uh, you know, but it all changed on one one flag. So the Rams first down and 10. Here late in the fourth quarter, down 27-7. Snap back, Prairie was going to throw the ball, and it is intercepted off a deflection for another win touchdown. My goodness. Number 12, John, John Watson and Paragould's just simply didn't execute yeah and uh, unable to complete the pass it was bobbled by the receiver and right into the waiting arms of John Watson who takes it in for the touchdown mm. so win has blown this thing open 33 to 7 with 403 to play in the game Not much you can say about that one. <laughs> no I'm pretty speechless right now <laughs> but, mm. Ball is down, kick is up. I think he made that one, and he did. One after is good. So that'll make the count win Madison. 34 in Paragould 7. And it's been big plays. Well, that just shows you, you know, football is a game of momentum, and when the momentum swings, it can just make a huge difference. And then, the, you know, when the momentum does swing like that, then, you know, you start getting breaks like that. And, you know, that, that heck of a play like you, I'm not discounting that. But the ball was tipped, uh, you know, uh, just a little simple pass to the, the outside there, and the ball was tipped, and they were able to, to pick it off and run it in. So, Well, you go back to execution. You have to execute. And on that kind of play, if you miss ex – if you don't execute well, that kind of thing can happen. And, yep. and unfortunately, it did. But like you said, what's frustrating about it is not from lack of effort and, you know, and what's probably more frustrating is the score is not going to reflect – how hard our kids played tonight. No. And uh, and the, the fact that just a few minutes ago we were in this ball game and possibly, uh, you know, could have uh, made it a heck of a ball game to the fourth. So win will kick off. Yellow Jackets are in kick formation. This is a high kick. It's going to be a little shorter than the others. It'll be down at about the 10-yard line. He's done a good job with his kickoffs tonight. Corbin right up the middle. Corbin makes a man miss. Corbin runs it hard up over the 25-yard <laughs> line. A little extra going yeah, on. A little here. extra going on back here at midfield. Corbin Bailey on the kickoff return. And Corbin will take it out to the about the 29-yard line. So the Rams have it first and 10. 3.57 to first go. In the ball game. And I think you have to say you see the disappointment on the sideline. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, 
I think they come down here tonight and feel like they had a shot to play, and I honestly thought they could uh, could establish the run and hopefully stay in this ball game to the fourth. And you know, at times we showed that. And uh, but boy, you know, when we needed a big play, they they got one. Well, they did. Our margin for success is pretty thin in that we can't afford right. crucial penalties and mistakes, and we had several tonight. And uh, Wynn's been the better team tonight, but uh, I don't think necessarily by the margin the score reflects. But it is what it is, and Mikey Peckle takes it up in there. Number six, Peckle on the carry. And Mikey with a pretty good gain on Game first three. down of about, well, they're going to say four second yards, down. so let's call second down at six. I'm going to give him an extra yard than he got. Snap back, up inside again. He's got shiftiness in there. Look <laughs> at those legs moving. That is a great job by Mikey Peckrell. He really he's is. hard to tackle in there. He's got a little he's got a little shift in him. And uh, that's close to a first down. Yeah, I, I love to watch him play and then uh, you know the, him and Chipman both are juniors and uh, you know they you know you're, you're glad that you're gonna get another year out of those two because uh, well they're both uh, got great potential in this offense. Sure do. First down and 10 for the Paragol Rams out at the 40-yard line. Snap. So to reverse inside, there's Peckle again. There's another five yards for Mikey. And, again, I see nice hustle by the offensive line. They're they're getting after it. Well, like you said earlier, you know, this, this team, we knew they're, they're not going to quit playing hard. I mean, it, it, they're not going to quit playing hard till the game, the Peckle final buzzer. Again, That's again, just the, uh, the attitude that Coach Phillips and his staff has instilled in these kids. Second down and five. 2.25 to play in the ball game. Snap back. And this time, not much doing. I think that's Cole Chipman again, and he didn't have much of an option that time. Wynn stacks it up at the line of scrimmage. Bring up third down and six. No gain. From the Ram 45. 2.05. Inside two minutes now to play. Snap back. Here comes Eric Copeland on a handoff inside, and Eric is going to be short of the first down, but he'll pick up about three yards. Bring up fourth down and two with Copeland a minute 40 to play in the ball game, and I suspect Coach will take game another run at it. Yep. Fourth down and one. Fourth and one. Look for a dose of Mikey here, I would think. And a go up and inside. That's going to be a first down, Chipman. Yeah, he's got the first down. He's into win territory at the 49-yard line. So Perigo will get a fresh set of downs, but with only 118 to play. We'll see if Perigo decides to just keep it on the ground if they'll take a shot at it. Avery Deering come in at quarterback. Which means we're going to take a shot at yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to take a shot at yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to yeah. take a shot. Yeah, and uh, boy, Avery's got a good arm, yeah. and he's a sophomore. and. Excited to see his development in this offense, but we're going to air it out here. Snap back. Yeah, he's going to run yeah. it up in the middle. Okay. And takes a good lick. But that's Mikey Peckrell yeah. that takes it. And Mikey up to the – down to the 46-yard line. Gain of three. Gain of three. Second and seven. And i tell you what, if we had a player of the game tonight, uh, Mikey would be a pretty good candidate. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's been a good player for us all year. But, boy, he's probably had his best night, obviously, breaking that big run. And they really showed what he could do with that speed. 29 seconds left. This probably will be the last play of the football game. And Perigol up inside another run. And that's Peckrell that just runs as hard as he can for about another three yards. And with 15 seconds left to play, I think that, well, let's see if Perigo's going to try maybe to slip one more play in here. We're down to eight. I don't think we're going to get it off. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and it's over. And Perigo didn't get it off. That'll bring the football game to an end from Wynn, Arkansas. So congratulations to the Wynn Yellow Jackets, who on their homecoming night in 2023, have earned a 34-7 win over our Paragol Rams. It's going to be a disappointed Paragol Ram unit. 
tonight, but uh, we got a credit win. And again, this has got to be a learning experience from the standpoint of, uh, we've talked about it, turnovers and yep. penalties. And again, you've, we go back to the couple of the critical points in the game where this really swung. Yep. Really was not a 34 to seven to game uh, from a you know disparity of the two teams, but turnovers and penalties kind of helped along that. And uh, tell you what, we've got one home game left next Friday night against Brooklyn, and uh, I think everybody really owns these seniors the opportunity to come out and really get behind them and see if we can't put another win up on the board. And uh, so there's a win coach is really giving a pat on the back to to a couple of our players who played hard and I uh, appreciate that. So, Brad, any final thoughts? I mean, congratulations to win. Uh, I thought we played hard, but, again, mistakes were, were really yeah, important. Yeah, absolutely. You, you pretty much wrapped all that up pretty well, but better than I could say it, honestly. And, uh, well, you just hate it for our kids because it wasn't for lack of effort. And, uh, you know, there's a big critical plays where the momentum swung and, and took you out of the ball game. And uh, win capitalized when they had the opportunity. Yep. All right, everybody, uh, final score, win 34, Paragul 7. Again, Paragul back at home for senior night next Friday night. We want to let you know that the next week's going to be a busy week on the Paragul Ram Sports Network. Tuesday, we plan to go down to Searcy for the state tournament for our girls' volleyball team. That's Tuesday night. Junior high football is at home next Thursday night. And then senior night next Friday night against Brooklyn. So hope everybody will, first of all, come out and support our teams. If you can't, then join us here on the Paragul Ram Sports Network. Brad, thanks for a great job on color tonight. Thanks to everybody for the setup, all of our students that made the trip down to win tonight. Zach Kent, Amy Glenn, and uh, Mike, Mike Chipman, our athletic director. So we want to wish everybody a very pleasant Friday night and a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week, everybody. Good night.